talks with musician Paquito de Rivera about Cuba, Latin jazz, and life. I asked my father, what is that? I said, I say, this, this music is called swing. And, and this is uh, uh, carne frijol. I said, carne frijol. So you're internationally known as a virtuoso of a, both the clarinet and the saxophone. I would like to start with your comparing the two instruments, your relationship to them physically and musically, how unlike or like one another they are. That's a good question. The saxophone is, uh, is a direct descendant of the clarinet. 
but like most well-being families, it had nothing to do with one, one to the other one. Uh -huh. It's a, uh, a, a single reed instrument and all that, but the, the way of approaching the instrument is, is totally different. The clarinet is a very hard instrument. And it's very easy to make it sound horrible. Mm -hmm. So the challenge of the clarinet is to make it sound beautiful, mm -hmm. that it can sound beautiful. It's very hard to do it. And in order to do it, you have to concentrate all the time on that instrument. So it's like when you are driving, you know, you especially in rush it. hour. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you don't want to do the, well, let's go, what happened back there? No, 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 boom, then yeah. you, you, know, you hit the next car. But the clarinet, you have to concentrate all the time in the, in the sound of that instrument. And the saxo? The saxophone is the most beautiful instrument that you know, ever invented. Yeah. It is not such a thing as an easy instrument, no. But the saxophone is, is easier to make it sound. Mm. You know, it's, it's a very thankful instrument, un instrumento agradecido, you know. You leave the saxophone for two weeks, three weeks, and when you pick it up, it sounds horrible, but at least it's sound. <laughs> but the clarinet, sometimes you are playing the, the clarinet, and then you, oh, it's, it's, you got a nice sound, and then you put it in the pick, you talk to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the audience, you know, are you going to play this and that? So you pick up the instrument again, and then, ah! Yeah. Who knows why? I, I always I say, it is a, clarinet is a female instrument. Because you never know what she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, your father played saxophone. My father was a, a, a classical saxophone player. He mm -hmm. was the, the person who imported the, the French school of the saxophone to Havana in, in the early 40s. And he gave you uh, saxo when you were very little, five years old, mm -hmm. and already by six you were playing in public. Yes. And when did you discover the clarinet? Oh, much later. In that time, my father wanted me to be an alto player, which mm -hmm. I am, no? But I was too small to play the alto, so he, he, import, he ordered this, this uh, corp soprano. Mm -hmm. It's a small saxophone, it's a beautiful instrument. So later on, when I pick up the alto, my father to told me that the alto players have to play clarinet too. And his dream was for me to be a classical clarinet player in the symphony. Mm -hmm. That I, I did for a little while, but I, I never liked it too much to be in a, doing that type of job. You're also um, famous for bringing together all sorts of rhythms and movements into your own style, the classical and the Caribbean music. Um, you were part of a group, Irakere, in the 70s that was very much known as the one that would incorporate rock and classical and salsa. Um, how does this collusion and coming together uh, come alive in you? It's my father's fault too. <laughs> Always blamed the father, right? Yeah, uh, Tito was the name of my father. He was a very Ellingtonian person in the sense that the great Duke Ellington said that there is only two kinds of music, good and bad. Yeah. So my father played in the, in the turntable. In, in that time, was even a phonograph. Mm -hmm. Later on, the, his, you know, the, the high fidelity LPs and all that. So he played 
Benny Goodman at Carnegie Hall playing play swing, for example. And then next, back to back, he played the Mozart concerto for clarinet, played play by Benny Goodman too. Mm. So for me, classical music and, and jazz and all that was just music. I grew up in that environment. Yeah. That is music. So I didn't discover the difference between uh, Perez Prado and, and, I don't know, and Stravinsky until I was like, maybe 12, 13 years old. A lot of the music that you were hearing as a little boy in Havana was coming from the United States, particularly from New York City, in the form of records and, and the uh, yeah. musicians that were coming to the island. Yeah, I, I remember when Nat King Cole was there with his wonderful trio. I was not allowed to be in the, in the audience because it was a cabaret, you know, in Tropicana. Mm -hmm. But I was in the, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, orchestra pit. Mm. With the, with the Armando, Armando Romeo Orchestra, watching that, that guy, you know, singing that, playing that beautiful piano, Nat King Cole and all those guys. And uh, uh, I saw some American musician there also, and, and then the, the, the records, I was going to say the CDs. <laughs> not yet, not, <laughs> not yet not at yet. the time. A lot of that music was coming from New York City, and uh, one of the dreams of yours was eventually to come to New York City. Well, how was New York perceived by you and other musicians at the time? Is Benny Goodman's fault that? <laughs> Not your father in this case. No, <laughs> well, he, he, played this, he played the record for me. Benny Goodman in 1938, the famous uh, concert in, in Carnegie Hall. The mm -hmm. first time that, that the jazz band played, played in, in uh, Carnegie Hall. They recorded that as a beautiful uh, live recording of Benny Goodman, Teddy Wilson, uh, Harry James, Gene Krupa, Lionel mm -hmm. Hampton. Mm -hmm. So I asked my father, what is that? I said, I say, this, this music is called swing. And, and this is uh, uh, Carnegie Hall. I said, Carni Frijol. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Carnegie Hall. This is a theater <laughs> in New York City. Yeah. So he explained to me what it was New York City and, and all, all, you know, all the music come from and what Carnegie Hall was. And then ever since I had this dream of being a musician in New York City, in the jungle. Mm. I call it New York the jungle because <laughs> I, I love that jungle.
Um, but your early uh, period in your career was spent in Cuba, particularly under the revolution. Tell me about that period of your life prior to 1980, when you came to the United uh -huh. States. How different was it or is it from what happened the moment you left Cuba, the country, and came to New York and life took you elsewhere? How, how are those periods to be compared? Too, too complicated, too sad, because actually we managed to get uh, read of a, of, a, of a dictator. Everybody was so so happy, you know, to get rid of, of a dictatorship. You know that. Fulgencio Batista. Fulgencio Batista one. was the the, uh, the, uh, the prior dictator. <laughs> <laughs> we are a specialist in that. So, <laughs> so uh, the the country started deteriorating tremendously, and the the, uh, the liberties were taken from us and all that. And I decided that I w I wanted to some moment to, to leave and to, to come to New York, which is my uh, my dreams and all that. That happened in 1980, but I have to to leave behind my, my wife mm -hmm. and my son. I had to wait for him, uh, to, to see him for eight years. Yeah. And I didn't see my mother in nine years because she left in 1968. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her until 1970, no, 1977, mm -hmm. that I saw her in Canada. And I, I know that it was a big international campaign to bring your son out of Cuba and uh, the, the, the coming together of father and son was very emotional. Yeah, yes. Well, it was a very happy encounter, you know. It was a very high price to pay, mm -hmm. but everything in life has a price, yeah. and I am happy I paid that price. Now my son is here. He's a very fine composer mm -hmm. and clarinet player and writer. And so the New, the New York of your dreams as a little boy and as an adolescent, um, did it clash with the reality of New York when you finally arrived? Was no. it the not same? Was it even better, perhaps? Not at all. New yeah. York is New York. And, and, uh, what did you find in New York when you arrived in 1980? What kind of uh, Latin rhythms, Latin music, Latin, Latin friends, musicians were there that you were able to sympathize directly and, and to begin working with? Well, not, not only Latin, people from all extractions. Yeah. People from all, all, all different type of backgrounds. At that point, uh, your relationship, soon after, your relationship with uh, Dizzy Gillespie started. Actually, I met Dizzy Gillespie in Havana. Yeah. And was a very uh, curious. I, I, I went to my, to my house and I found a, a paper bag and said, Paquito, we have been looking for you. Where are you? Dizzy Gillespie. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they, they don't announce anything in the, in the newspaper there. And, you know, Dizzy Gillespie's coming in the boat. Don't nobody, you know, they, they <laughs> just talk about Fidel Castro and Leonid Brezhnev and other things. You don't know anything about <laughs> a, a famous American trumpet player coming to town. So I went to the uh, La Basto in the, in the corner, La Bodega, mm -hmm. you call that, the grocery store in the corner. I said, what type of joke is this? This is Gillespie sent writing. Then I said, hey, Jesus. They said, oh, there was a very strange character looking for you here. A strange character, what is that? They said, well, it's a black guy who was wearing some type of Sherlock Holmes. He, you know, he was dressed dressed like a black guy dressed like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and then, oh, that is Dizzy Gillespie, man. <laughs> that was the, the, then later on, I met him. Yeah. In this, in the in the Havana Havana Libre Hotel, mm -hmm. they have like a jam session there, and the Stan Guest was there also, and David Amram, Air Father Heinz. Mm -hmm. Then we we play a concert uh, that night, also in a theater called Teatro Teatro Mella. And eventually, when, when you came here, you started working with him together in a group, the United Nations, uh, and the relationship was close. Very they, close. This yeah. was a, a very uh, very generous man. Mm -hmm. He helped me a lot. I was never a part of his orchestra. Mm. Always, I, I worked with him as a guest artist and on a special projects. Because he say, you have to pursue your own career mm. as a band leader. I said, no, this I want to play with you. He said, yeah, but I don't want you to play with me. <laughs> so you go and do your own thing. encourage you. That was very nice of you. And I take this opportunity to ask you about the word jazz itself, because I've seen a number, a number, many definitions, and everybody seems to define the term uh, differently, uh, including Gillespie. How would you define, what is jazz? Always I, 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 I uh, quote Herbie Hancock on that. Years ago in a downbeat magazine, Herbie Hancock said, jazz is something impossible to define and very easy to recognize. Mm -hmm. Jazz is the music of the United States of America. And, and then it, it is the music of the immigrants. All of us that come here have make a contribution to this music. And if it keeps the spirit, 
you know, the, 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 uh, the energy of that music, is, you can call it jazz. You know, it's, it's an art and it's very su subjective. In, in, in particular, what has been the contribution, in, if you could define it, of Latin jazz? Oh. Tremendous. Tre tremendous. From the very beginning, Jelly Roll Morton mm -hmm. was talking about the Latin tinge in American music. Mm. I think he called it the Spanish tinge in American music, but you know what he means with that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Spanish tinge in American music, ever since the contribution of people like Alberto Socarras, the mm -hmm. Cuban uh, flutist who was the, he played the first uh, jazz flute solo in the history of jazz, then Mario Bauza, Chano Pozo, Chico Farrell, Antonio Carlos Llobim, mm -hmm. uh, Jorge Dalto, Michel Camilo, it's so many of them, yeah. thousands of, of us around, making a contribution, Juan Tisol, wrote some of the most important pieces in the, in the, uh, in the uh, book of Duke Ellington, Caravan and Perdido. Everybody thinks that Ellington wrote that. Ellington and didn't write that. the Latin side. Yeah, yeah. Juan Tissot wrote that, Puerto Rican yeah. valve trombonist. One of the amazing things that I, I find in your music, uh, Paquito, is the way the classical Stravinsky, uh, Bach, Mozart become an integral ingredient in it. And at the same time, you bring your native Cuban and Caribbean uh, uh, heritage into the music as well. Um, you improvise, you pay tribute to Stravinsky, the, the story of the, of the soldier, or, or a certain part of, of a certain piece by, by Bach. And at the same time, you are a composer. I want you to talk to me about the difference between using somebody else's piece and starting from scratch, something that is yours. What is the difference between playing, in, in interpreting somebody else's uh, piece and doing something on your own? Well, to start with, we all use the same 12 notes. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Mozart or Machito, yeah. we, we use all the same 12 notes. So all you have to do is to interpret that thing. When you are creating something, uh, well, you, you Half of the battle is, is, is won because it's, you know, it's, it's part of you, what are you doing? Now, when you have to understand the music of other people, you have to do that, understanding. Mm. You have to pay respect to what that, that person has been uh, devoting his time, right? So I analyze first what, what he was trying to, if he's alive, I will call him. And talk directly and see what. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you come home and have some black beans and rice? That is the best, the best way you can <laughs> come to some piece of music. Do you feel constrained when you are using somebody else's piece by, by the piece itself? It's, it's not any uh, system for that. Mm -hmm. For example, when I, rec I, I, I recorded, that, that's the idea you have there, is the, the first Spanish version of the Sordia Stale of Stravinsky. Mm -hmm. That is the most difficult piece that I, play, I ever played in my life. But difficulty is not a, a milestone in, in art. Some pieces are very difficult and sound horrible. But the, this piece is very difficult, but it's, uh, the, the result is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most beautiful pieces ever written. You know, this, it's seven instruments. You know, and it's, uh, well, Slavinki was a genius. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to work on that. It's a pleasure and a pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Both things. Both things. Pressure. But it, it's, it's worth it. Last year we celebrated all around the world, the birth, the hundred birthday of who is the most representative and beloved for the Cuban composers. I'm talking about great pianist, great conductor, and uh, a great inspiration for all of us. I'm talking about the great Ernesto Lecuona. And uh, we want to play, we want to improvise on some of his uh, most famous melodies. Um, let's see what happens. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, how do you teach jazz and your type of music to students? Can you teach it? Um, I've heard you say at one point that your father was a good teacher, but oh, that yeah. you're not. No. Why? My father was a natural teacher. He, some, some people are born with that. My bass player, Oscar Estañaro, mm -hmm. I learned so much from him. I, I, I learned all the time from him because he knows how to explain things. For me, it's hard to explain things. So what I will do, I, I love to do clinics that I play and then people ask questions and say, you know something? I don't know. <laughs> you say, I let's know. find, let's find, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very important to say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. so I think that is the most important to be honest with your students. You come here to study with me. Okay, let's find out how I do this because I don't know how to do. I am a very natural musician, no? mm -hmm. so I, I can I, I do certain things, but I don't know how I do that. So they made me find out how I did this, or, or why I cannot do that. So the students also help you understand how the, the process of making of course. music. My father always say, you know that we should play, we should pay the students to study to study with us <laughs> because we learn more yeah. when you teach you learn yeah. if you want. By the way, we've talked about your father. How about your mother? Tell me about her influence on your life. Oh, my father, my mother was my, my, my lawyer. <laughs> she defended <laughs> me. If, even if I, if I did something wrong, she always defended me. <laughs> 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 and she, she is a very creative person. She's a, a, a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Now she's retired. She lives with you? She lives around the same neighborhood, and she cooks for me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and travel with me, and, and love to drive, and she's in a very, very good shape. Yo estaba, literalmente, como un niño con un juguete nuevo. Y el juguete era mi recién estrenada carrera de músico internacional. Me acuerdo que mi padre estaba más nervioso que yo y que con nosotros volaba también el cuarteto vocal de las hermanas Valdivia. Con todo el grupo abordamos un avión bimotor de la compañía norteamericana Delta, que al salir de La Habana hizo escala en el diminuto aeropuerto de Puerto Príncipe, en la vecina y paupérrima República de Haití, primer país independiente del nuevo mundo y un ejemplo bien claro de que independencia no es siempre sinónimo de libertad y mucho menos de progreso. Ahí estuvimos un par de horas, 
ante los serios rostros y la mirada escrutadora y desconfiada de los soldados de François Duvalier, amados hasta los dientes. Poco después levantamos el corto vuelo que nos llevaría a la capital dominicana que el dictador del país. En aquel... Afortunadamente, la misma naturaleza de mi trabajo me ha brindado la oportunidad de viajar casi constantemente durante los últimos 50 años de mi ya larga carrera. El resto del tiempo me lo he pasado en carretera, trillo, terraplenes y caminos vecinales, hostales, hoteles, posadas y hospitales de todo tipo, barcos, trenes, carretas de bueyes, helicópteros y aviones y aeropuertos desde Haití y Oklahoma hasta Singapur y el Cusco, pasando por la bellísima y medieval Dubrovnik, el Líbano, Luanda y Jerusalén. Durante mis viajes he conocido la gente más diversa e interesante que jamás habría ni soñado. Y tengo tantos o más amigos diseminados por este mundo de lo que hice en mi país de origen a través de los 30 años de vida social que mantuve allí. One, one of the things also that I've noticed uh, recently in your career is that you have uh, begun writing. Um, recently, uh, not too long ago, that you published a book uh, that is built as an autobiography. It's filled Sorry. with anecdotes. Uh, Mi vida sexual, my saxophone likes, or no, my sax... My, my sax life. My sax yeah. life, uh, that is in the process of being translated into English. And I understand also that you have uh, finished, or are almost finishing, a novel. Yes. This is not recent. I, I, I have been writing ever since I was a very little kid in the, in the school. I, I, I won some uh, several prizes of what uh, they call the compositions mm -hmm. about my teacher or about the uh, a cute girl in the, in the class and especially that. <laughs> <laughs> Those got good grades. Yeah, and that. about uh, a great composer that I admire, for example, Mozart. I, I always admire Mozart. Yeah. So I, I wrote some compositions about Mozart. And what is the difference, if you could explain it, Paquito, between composing music and writing an essay or writing a novel in terms of creation? I, I will tell you something. That another journalist asked me that, that question, and I, I, I never formulate that question to myself, but now I know how he did it. I write the same, the same way I compose or the same way I improvise, in a very improvisational way and in a very jazzy way. Sometimes, e even the, my writing looks a little misorganized in, in, in terms, in the, in the sense that I go back and, f and, back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's the way I, I improvise. That's the way I play. You, you, leave, it, you leave it to random, to accident, to, to spontaneity. Uh -huh. Is that also the way you deal you, with your life, or your life is much more organized and, and structured? No, uh, I, have, I have to have structured thing. I like to improvise, but I have to know on top of what I am going to improvise. Mm -hmm. Every improviser has some type of, of uh, foundation, mm -hmm. you know, like, a, like a building, you know. You, you need to have, you, you must know where you're going, you know, first. And then wh how you go there, well, that's, that's, let's take this, this way or this other way, mm -hmm. this path which is beautiful with trees and all that, they go to the lake. Mm -hmm. So you can improvise how you get there, but you, you should know where you're going. In, in this piece, the Historia del Soldado, Story of the Soldier, you collaborated with the, the Argentine Nacha Guevara, and I understand also you're doing a collaboration with her uh, based on the life or the work of Jose Martí, somebody who influenced you quite much. Oh, yes. Ma Martí is my, is my god. He's, he's a person I admire very much. And this is a proven... Here is Jose Martí. It's the image? His image is here. Uh -huh. this, this is a, a coin in 19, 1916, co gold coin, yeah. with the, with the uh, image of Jose Martí. Tell me about Martí. Why is he so important to you? Martí is a, is a, was a genius, a person with so much knowledge, but especially with so much desire to learn, mm. which is more important than the knowledge that you already have. Mm -hmm. He was a person who analyzed others and who paid respect to others. What he wrote about Jose White, for example, uh, a fantastic Cuban, it's a, an Afro-Cuban violinist who was a, a son of, of slaves. He was born to, to a slave uh, uh, parent, and he became the director of the Paris Conservatory. Mm. So he wrote beautiful things about his playing and his approach to music and all that. Martí is a, is a, is a, is a very special character. He is known mostly but being a patriot mm -hmm. and, a, and a person who died very young, 
by uh, defending his, his, his country, country and all that. Yeah. But he was also a great poet, a great writer, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I am delighted to do this with Nacha Guevara, you know. <laughs> this, uh, and and um, like you, uh, Martí was uh, an exile or, an, or a person who lived outside his country. Exile has been good to you. Non exile is good for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oxymoron. I guess. <laughs>
Fernández Saturnino, from Funda, Curazao, and Oscar Tañaro, from Lima, Perú. Todavía no han comprado mi libro. ¿Qué esperan? Este en español and this one in English. Ver tu yellito en inglés. And ser o no ser. Esa es la jodienda. En español. You will have lots of fun with these books. So, go ahead. I'm with you.